All right. Uh, now, most of you don't know Brother Jackson Lawley. He is from over in North Carolina. And um, he came to the truth that this Bible teaches. And he lost, his, he lost a lot of friends. And I've been there and done that. And it's okay. You'll get new friends. And they'll uh, focus on truth. And uh, the, Lord, uh, the Lord always provides. And when a young man is willing to make a stand... For the truth, as opposed to friendships, at his age, I'm always very impressed. Um, he heard me preach over in North Carolina and still seemed to like me afterwards, so <laughs> that's to his merit. And so, brother, you come and preach what the Lord's given us, or given you for us, and um, he was very surprised that I didn't ask you to put on his two-piece suit. <laughs> and he's got, his, he's got his pistol, so if you don't say amen, you know what that is. <laughs> I've got to have some kind of coercion here. Well, I, it's good to be here this evening. I worked last night, 10 to 6 in this morning. I slept about an hour because I was so excited to get out here. So if I fall asleep and I preach myself to sleep, that'll be a shame, really. So. Right. <laughs> Ephesians chapter number 1. Ephesians chapter number 1. Brother, I appreciate the opportunity to preach. Uh, it's not about me. It's all about the Lord and for His glory. And that this evening, if there was to be a title, it would be to the praise of the glory of His grace. Amen. And, and really, that's all that we should be about is to the praise and glory of God. When we've got the witness, it should be for the glory of God. You're right. Of course, we want to see sinners saved, but it's for the glory of God. That's it. And He'll be glorified either in salvation or damnation. Amen. And, and really, we shouldn't weigh the results on whether people are converted, but whether God has given the glory, and God's given the glory when we are obedient to Him. Amen. Ephesians chapter number 1, verse number 1, the Bible says, Paul, an apostle, Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus, Amen. to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you. And peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Amen. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Amen. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times Amen. he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Amen. That we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, Amen. which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. Brother Ken, would you lead us in a word of prayer? Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for the privilege to gather together uh, to sit under the preaching of your word. I thank you for uh, the brother that has come with the word of God. Feed us from this word, from the epistle of Paul to the Ephesians tonight. Uh, let this text shine forth let the truths that are in it. Uh, just radiate in our hearts, change the way that we live, that we might glorify the save uh, the sinner, Lord, who is here tonight without Christ. And quicken your people and make them alive again unto thee. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I was listening to a sermon on the way over here, and it was Brother White, and he said, 
There are people today that say when the preacher gets up and preaches the gospel, why do you preach that same old message? Why do you preach that same old message? Well, I'll tell you why. To the glory of God and to the help of the saints. Amen. You know, even though we're saved every time we hear the gospel, it ought to be a humbling to our hearts and bring us to a humble adoration of our great God who uh, for the good pleasure of his will has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. You know, so easily and so justly he could have passed over us, but by his grace he chose us in Amen. him. And every time you hear the blessed story that Jesus Christ in fact came to this earth to save sinners, to save his people from their sins. That ought to humble our hearts. Amen. That ought to give us enough strength to go on another day. That, that's got to be enough to encourage us and to strengthen us to keep going. Amen. You know, we ought to never shrug our shoulders and uh, bow our head when the preacher preaches on the grace of God. Amen. That story never gets old, but it's a glorious truth. Amen. And it speaks great peace to my heart. I want to look at three things mentioned here in the text, and of course there's many more, but I want to look at election, I want to look at an effectual call, and an earnest of the Holy Spirit. I alluded over there to Matthew, he says, For he shall or for she shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus, Amen. for he shall save his people Amen. from their sins. And that's the, the promise of God. When Jesus came Amen. to this earth to, to die on the cross, he didn't die for some useless means that he's done all that he can and he's just hoping that we make the right decision. But when Jesus hung on the cross between God and man and God poured out his wrath on his son, that was for his people that actually Amen. purchased something. Amen. That purchased our eternal salvation. That redeemed us, the people that are elected by God. That's it. Amen. Amen. That's a hated truth. I don't understand You're right. <laughs> how in the world to think that God in His grace looked at vile, wicked, wretched sinners and had mercy on them. Right. Glory be to God. First of all, we see in verse number three, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ according as he who God the Father right. hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. First thing we see in the text this evening is election comes from God. Amen. And there's this idea and I've heard it before that uh, the devil throws in a boat and God throws in a boat. <laughs> And you know, they're both, both voting for you and man and his sovereign free will can cast the final ballot. That's nonsense. Amen. Amen, you're right. And you hear that people say, well, it's like the president when he runs. He runs, but he's not elected unless he chooses to run. Well, how many people chose to run? The only one gets picked. I mean, their whole idea falls on itself. Right here in the scriptures, according as he hath chosen us. Amen. Election then must in fact come forth from God the Father. Yeah. All scriptures given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. If we're going to know anything about anything we need to know, it's going to come from the Bible. That's it. Amen. That's where our doctrine comes from. It's not our emotions, it's not our feelings. God doesn't care about how you feel about it. Amen. Hey, he didn't ask your opinion. He That's just it. said, this is my word. This stands and it never passes away. Amen. Right. And so when we read in the blessed word of God, according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that means for a fact that God hath chosen us in him. That's it. Yeah. Amen. When did he do it? Well, it obviously wasn't at the point that we made a decision for right. Christ. If it was, I mean, it's hard to make a decision for Christ before I'm here on this earth. <laughs> right. And if it's before the foundation of the world, that shows us some things. That's before we did any good deeds or any bad deeds. Amen. Right? That's before we can do anything to please God. And in the flesh, we can't please God. The flesh profits nothing. That's right. right. He didn't Amen. say the flesh profits a little bit. 
He didn't say, I've come to the end of myself. I've done everything I can. And if your flesh will just help me out a little bit, you'd be all right. The flesh profits nothing. We're chosen in him before the foundation of the world. That's it. Amen. What a blessed truth. That, and, and I believe he does have foreknowledge. He, he knew me. He knows us. He loves us with an everlasting love. And he looked down through time and saw Jackson Lolly, and there wasn't anything in me that he should desire me or want me, but just simply to the good pleasure of his will by his grace, he it's chose good. me anyways. Amen. Oh, glory be to God. Yeah, hallelujah. I tell you right now, this, this right here, the reason people hate it is because it dashes pride to pieces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. It takes pride and it says no. It, it takes all of our ability and laughs at it. Mm -hmm. It takes our free will, free will, and mocks us. Yeah. <laughs> and abases us. Amen. And we're cast down into the dust right before the feet of Jesus Christ. And we have nothing to bring. We have nothing to offer. But yet the Holy Spirit regenerates us and shows us how unworthy we are and how vile we are and how wicked we are. But he doesn't keep us there. He points our eyes to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh and we God. see him high and lifted up on the cross for our sin. And where is boasting? There is none except in the cross of Jesus Christ. There's no boasting in Jackson Lolly. There's no boasting in you. There's That's only it. boasting in the Lord. The Bible says, let him the glory, glory in the Lord. Amen. He won't share his glory with anybody else. You're right. Why in the world would he share his glory in salvation? He's not going to share his glory with a single soul. Amen. Isaiah 42, the Bible says, behold my servant. My uphold, my elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged, till he have set judgment in the earth, and the isles shall wait for his law. Amen. Thus saith the Lord, God the Lord. He that created the heavens and stretched them out. He that spread forth the earth and hath uh, that which cometh out of it. He that giveth breath unto the people upon it and spirit to them that walk therein. I the Lord have called thee in righteousness. Will hold thine hand and will keep thee. Yeah. And give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. to open the blind eyes to bring out of the prisoners from the prison and then to sit in darkness out of the prison house I am the Lord that is my name and my glory will I not give to another neither my praise to graven images behold the former things are come to pass and new things that I declare before they spring forth to tell you of them Amen. who you reckon he's talking about there Lord Jesus. Yeah. He won't share his glory with another. Amen. He said, I've spoken it, I'll do it. What was he talking about? He was talking about the Lord Jesus Christ who came and died for the elect. He came and died for his people. Amen. And he brings them to salvation having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Amen. Where is pride? It's gone. Mm -hmm. Oh my. Why were we chosen? Brother, it wasn't because he looked down and said, Brother Larry's going to say yes. Hmm. Right. But left in ourselves, we'd all say no. You're right. Amen. There was nothing about God that I desired and everything about sin that I loved. Mm, right. we, we shook our fist in the face of God and Amen. as wicked rebels, but according to the good pleasure of his will, he predestinates to the of children in Christ Jesus. Amen. Why did he do this? To the praise of the glory Amen. of his grace. Amen. To the praise of the glory of his grace. Wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Amen. Friends, this is often knocked out as a terrible truth. Oh, that's that's such a bad belief. Why would you believe that? That's so terrible. To the praise and glory of God's grace. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 
to the Armenian thought that we have to work with God. That's not grace. That's works. Amen. You're right. Even a little bit of works is still works-based salvation. You're right. Oh, but when you take man out of the equation that he's done everything not to be saved and everything wicked that God should have just passed over him, then it has to be by the sovereign and free grace of God that yeah. anybody should come to faith and repentance in him. Amen. It's just by his grace. Amen. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. That's it. Amen. What are some things we're elected to? Listen, we're predestinated to the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. We're chosen in him. Uh, we're given redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. Further down it says, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance. Amen. We've obtained an inheritance, having been predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Amen. So we see a few truths. Election comes from God. We're the passive recipient. We've not done anything Amen. to act upon this, but we're just the recipient. We see the word predestined to adoption. Glory be to God. I'm Amen. a child of God. I'm in Christ Jesus. Praise and glory be to God. Amen. We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Uh, friends, you understand that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Amen. There, there, there's no way to be forgiven. All these sacrifices of the Old Testament, they're types and shadows of the Lord Jesus Christ who would be the spotless Lamb of God. Amen. And I'm thankful that through Him we have redemption. Listen, this is speaking in certain terms in whom we have redemption. Yeah. Oh, man. You follow out other beliefs to their logical conclusion... You can lose salvation. Yep. If you can gain it, you can lose it. That's it. Oh, <coughs> we have redemption. Yeah. We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Look at how many times he mentions the grace of God. Amen. Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. I'm so, so humble that God would show us these things amen you know we ought not to be proud about this amen you know there's ways that we often get accused oh you're so arrogant you just say well you're a part of the left and i'm not you're so arrogant hey this is no cause for arrogance amen right? this is a cause for humility um the bible says jacob have i loved and esau have i hated and so you understand that it could have easily been you that he hated and that's passed it. over. Man, that's humbling. That's humbling. I think, glory to God, having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth, even in him, in whom we also have attained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Amen. Um, just as the sun is caused to rise by God, and it casts out the darkness in the morning, so it is that it is by the power of God that the, the Lord Jesus Christ arises in our hearts, and we're yeah. seeing him. It's not by us. We don't cast out darkness. Amen. But he does. Yeah. You're right. We see here he has abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself. We don't know anything apart from God's word and the Holy Amen. Spirit. And we ought to thank God that he would reveal these things to us. I'm glad that he doesn't try to save sinners. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm glad that he saved sinners. Amen. 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 I'm glad that he sees the travail of his soul and he's satisfied. Yeah. And by his death, he brings many to repentance, to saving Amen. knowledge, to saving faith, to grace. His death, his blood, not one drop of his blood was shed in vain. You're right. Not one ounce. Not one ounce of bloodshed of our Lord Jesus Christ was for sin if guys it goes to hell. Yeah. You're right. All oh, but every precious drop was shed for you and me. And all those that would be saved. I see here in chapter number two, look very briefly. You happy quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Amen. Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is Amen. rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace, ye are saved. That's it. Who's he talking about? Who, who is he talking to? He addressed that in chapter number one. Yep. The, life, the, the saved, the faithful in Christ Jesus, those that heard the word and believed, this is the same group of people. You hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Mm -hmm. He took the dead sinner and he regenerated it. And they were converted. Amen. All by the grace of God. You can tell a lot about a testimony if it says, I, I, I. Someone's testimony if it starts out, I, I, I. That's that's a big problem. Well, I made a decision for Christ many mm. years ago and I have lived for him that, you know, yada, yada, that's right. wickedness. Oh, but that one that says I was headed towards sin. But God, who is rich in mercy. Amen. But God, stop me in my tracks and save my soul. Even when I was dead in my sin, he quickened me together with Christ. For by grace have I been saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness to, toward us. Through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith. Amen. Not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. That's it. Here we see the quickening power, the effectual call of the Holy Spirit. I love how the, the miracles of Jesus Christ while he's on this earth often point into a deeper spiritual truth. I think over there when I see this, I think the old Lazarus laying there dead as a doornail. Right. Jesus didn't go up to him and say, man, if you just holler at me, if you just reach your hand towards me just a little bit, I'll come help you. What did he do? He walked up to him and said, Lazarus, come forth. Amen. Oh, I'm thankful that God surely saves sinners. Yeah. Lastly, we see the earnest of the Spirit. Whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of, your inherit, or of our inheritance, till the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. That word earnest, that's a pledge. That's something the Father gives us in assurance that he will in fact finish what he started. Amen. We can be confident of this very thing that he which begun a good work in us shall complete it to the day of redemption. He's not going to lose one. Amen. All that the Father gives him shall come to him and he will not lose a single one. You're right. If he could, he wouldn't be a good shepherd. Amen. Right? If he could lose one, he wouldn't be a good savior, but he shall not lose any. And I think there that we have the earnest of our inheritance. How often we go off of emotions and things. How many times do we get stressed out and things go on around us and, and, and it's you don't always feel good. We don't go off feelings though. Right. When we get in those times where we're in dark times and we're in trouble and distresses, hey, we, if you have the earnest of our inheritance, you have the Holy Spirit, you have peace. Mm -hmm. You can have peace in the worst of times. 
because we have a pledge. Amen. We kind of have like a down payment sort of deal. Yeah. Here it is. To the end that we're, you know, we're not just elected for a temporary cause, but to the end that one day we'll be glorified together with Christ. Right. Amen. We'll be with Him in heavenly places, and we'll be with Him forever and ever and ever, with years without end, to be able to worship Him and to praise Him. And listen, the Holy Spirit has given to us as an earnest. Amen. As a pledge. I know that I am His. Because the Holy Spirit dwells in me. Yeah. Amen. That's it. John Gill said in this verse, for this sealing work of his leaves a greater impress of holiness upon the soul and engages more of acts of holiness. Wherefore, the doctrine of assurance is no licentious doctrine. No persons are so holy as those who are truly possessed of that grace. And it's for such who pretended to it and live in sin is a certain thing that they, in reality, know nothing of it. Yeah, my, my. You know, oftentimes people mock and ridicule of eternal security. We call it perseverance of the saints and preservation of the Holy Spirit. They mock and jest. They say, well, you're just giving people license to sin. Friend, if you have the Holy Spirit, you're not going to want to have Amen. a license to sin. Amen. We sin, yes, I understand that, but you're not going to enjoy it. Amen. Arthur Pink said it this way. He said that the, the child of God is not free from the presence of sin, but he's full of mourning towards sin. Amen. There's a deep hatred toward sin. And it's all by the Word of God. I think here, it all goes back to verse number four. Why is all this to the praise of the glory of His grace? To the praise of the glory of His grace. Mm -hmm. To the glory of God. Yeah. We're saved by grace alone, through faith in Christ alone, to the glory of God alone. Yeah. Amen. And friends, uh, all false religion goes by works. Mm -hmm. Every bit of false religion says, what can I do? Mm -hmm. What can I do to please the Creator? What can I do to enter into paradise and to preserve myself? Amen. Oh, but the grace of God says you can't do a thing. Mm. But I did it all. Amen. That's what it says. Yeah. And, and really, if you think about it, any of these semi Pelagian ideas are blasphemy. Yep. Amen. They spit in the face of God. They say, oh, I, I, I gotta help you out. Mm. Oh man. Psalm eleven three says this. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? <laughs> We've got to stand on this truth. We've got to preach these truths. Amen. These truths bring glory to God. These truths magnify God and exalt God. David said, I'll exalt God. I'll extol God. I'll praise God all the days of my life. I'll bless Him forever. That ought to be our desire to bless God and to exalt God. Nebuchadnezzar, after he'd been humbled, he walked out, you know, beforehand. He saw his kingdom. He said, look at this great kingdom that I've built with my hands. All this stuff that I've done. That time his uh, mind left him and he was thrown out in the field. And then when the Lord humbled him, he said, I'll extol and praise and worship the King of Heaven. He's able to abase and humble the proud. So, Our desire should be to worship God. Mm -hmm. These truths are humbling truths. Not only that, they're God-honoring truths. I want to read, I know this is another verse, I've got two verses left, one verse. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning. From ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand. I will do all my pleasure. Call her Adam's bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel from a far country. Yea, I have spoken it. I also will bring it to pass. Amen. I have purposed it. I will also do it. Good. There's assurance of this kind of salvation, amen. There's assurance. 
Our Lord, we've come before this evening, God. I pray that you would humble our hearts. Lord, I'm just an unworthy wretch. God, I thank you for your grace, Lord. And God, I pray that you draw us to a humble adoration of you and a, that we would exalt you and magnify you and worship you, God. And Lord, keep us from pride and arrogance and all these things that would puff up the flesh. Dear God, I pray to be pleased with everything that's done this evening. And Lord, for your people, God, as we've studied on this doctrine that you've elected, you've saved, you've redeemed, you've truly saved, you've effectually called, you've done everything for salvation for your people. God, let us give you glory, let us give you praise for that, dear God, that you be exalted among us. Lord, we thank you so much for these dear brethren out here in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother. Amen.